Welcome to the Confidence Through Health Podcast. My name is Jerry Snyder. As a health, wellness, and sports performance coach, my goal each week is to bring you experts to help you take control of your health and build your self-confidence. Thanks for including me today on your journey to better health. I'd like to thank our sponsor for this episode, All In Health and Wellness. If you're looking for a health coach, you're looking for a sports performance coach, you're looking for nutrition guidance, like for instance, a meal by meal plan that will help you understand how to eat, it will teach you how to eat, and it will give your body, your cells, the proper nutrition to feel great and be able to perform at your best, not just physically, but also emotionally and mentally. If you're looking for those things, you're looking for the key to improve your sports performance, both from a nutrition standpoint and an exercise physical standpoint and a mental standpoint as you approach your athletic event. All In Health and Wellness is able to help in these areas. Go to allinhealthandwellness.com and you'll find the contact information for how to get in touch with them and get started on the plan that will improve your life. All right. So Brandon, thank you for joining me on the Confidence Through Health podcast. Nice to meet you, Jerry. Uh, great to have you or great to, for me to be on here and excited to, to chat today. So thank you for your time. Of course. And and I've had I've had physical therapists on before. And uh, as, as people that have listened to my podcast, especially in recent episodes, know I've been going to physical therapist for quite a bit now in the last few months because of an injury that I sustained. And you know, it's it's a vital piece of our health and wellness tool belt because there's times where we just we have an ache or a pain and and you know the old like hey let's just walk it off yeah does it always work especially as we start to age right it it does not always work and that it's it's funny because we hear that phrase a lot in the clinic um, yeah. and there's a certain generation of of patients that kind of throw that phrase out there of yeah. if it doesn't hurt or uh, you know walk it off or no pain, no gain, you know, is another right. big one that we hear a lot. And I kind of chuckle as a therapist, one, because I grew up under that same mindset mm -hmm. um, where you did just walk it off. Um, and But in healthcare, what we really see is, I think, deciphering between what is injured and what is hurt. Right. Um, and I think for those of us in the running community, we know that running is, you're going to have pain. It's pretty mm -hmm. much inevitable. Yeah. Um, I don't, I, there's so many studies out there and I, it's like three out of every four runners experience pain at some point. Like it's yeah. pretty, I mean, that's 75%. It's pretty high. So to think yeah. that knowing that it's going to be part of your journey, I think being educated enough to know, am I hurt or am I injured? And then, mm -hmm. you know, having the resources around you to kind of help filter through those and, and take the next step when necessary. Right. And specifically like it, it for runners or, or, or walkers or really anybody with, with, with foot issues. Um, you know, and I remember years ago, I was talking to my sister, um, and she was having back pain and knee pain and all this. And I was like, have you had your feet checked? And she was like, well, no, I don't have any foot pain. I'm like, yeah, but everything starts, starts at the foot, like how you land, yeah. how your foot places. And so you may not have pain in your foot. And sometimes it's because like your, your brain registers the hip pain yeah. or the knee pain first. Yes. Like the and feet are farther away. It just doesn't register it. Yeah. And that, is she a runner or she was, was no, she not a runner? Just no runner? Okay. E either or like, in, I mean, we obviously see it in runners because running amplifies any sort of right. deficit right off the bat. Right. Um, right. But even in your general population, I think that's something that, you know, as a therapist, we have to do a good job of educating our patients to say, you know, Hey, I'm working. I know you're here for knee pain. We're going to really work on your core and your hip. And yep. if, I think some therapists probably just go on with that, but I think, you know, it's really good to educate those patients as to why, you know, okay, hey, so your knee or your hip is controlled, controls your knee. So when you're walking or running, because obviously it's going to be seen more in that population, you know, your knee has a tendency to drift inward. We call that knee valgus. So right. if that's the case at impact, you know, your body weight's load and that knee drifts in, that's not a knee issue. That's a hip issue, right? So we're going to yeah. really work on that athlete or that patient to really strengthen the core and the hip stabilizer. So when, when that ground reaction force is happening and they're in that stance phase of the run or walking, you know, for your, for that population, that hip is controlling that knees movement inward. So right. they see the knee pain and they experience that knee pain, but the, the source is the hip. And so I think right. it's just good to educate those patients on that. So they understand the why behind the exercises that we're taking right. them through. Otherwise right. they're like, well, he's working on my hip, but I'm here for my knee pain. And like, right. there's a reason, you know, so. Yeah. Well, and that's like, cause I, 
the the issue that I've had recently was uh, at a small tear in my uh, Achilles. Okay. Um, and yeah, I, I ran through it because it yeah. was internal. And so it was like when you tested the Achilles, it seemed to be intact. Yeah. And it wasn't until an ultrasound and, of course, an MRI right after that, that it was like, oh, no, you have a hole in your Achilles. <laughs> um, so you better stop or it's going to yeah. tear. Right. Yeah. And and so in going through the treatment for that, you know, even this week, the, you know, my my therapist was like, OK, so we're going up the chain. OK, well, the hamstrings weak. OK, well, and yeah. now we're finding out that there's abdominal muscles that are that are weak, even though I've been doing all kinds of, you know, it core work. It's just not yeah. the the correct stuff or right. the load was just not in the right spot. And, yeah. you know, once it get once it started to give out, it goes to what's going to be the weakest part of the chain. Yep. And that's what yeah. I felt, and, you know? And I, and you know, one thing we say in the clinic all the time is like, I'm sure we all grew up with the phrase, like your hip bones connected to your, you know, and right. this kind of story goes on. And I had come across an article years ago now with my baseball background and they had tied like shoulder tendonitis to tight, Achille to a tight calf. And okay. that almost seems like far fetched to be like, yeah. well, that's, they're pretty far apart and they are. But if you, if, like you just said, if your calf is tight, that connects to your hamstring, which connects to your hip, helps control the, the core muscles and then up the chain it goes. And so the right. arm in the thrower, right, the arm might lag behind simply by that full body kinetic chain process right. of deficit, right? So you're looking right. for that weakest link. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, and I think that's what's great about runners in general is it's not just you're treating them as a whole right you're right. not just treating like you're here for foot pain or knee pain or hip pain we're going to look at your body globally because yeah. every muscle is really involved throughout that whole running cycle from from heel strike to push off you know right. and everything in between so yeah um, it's important to kind of look at the body as a whole and really break down not only the target area of why you're in the the clinic or why mm -hmm. you're having the pain you are but Look at other deficits that maybe prevent some other things from arising down the road too. Right. And so for that runner that's having, you know, that that starts to develop foot pain, right? And 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 maybe it's because, okay, my shoes are too old and you know, so I'm losing cushion. And so it's it's now my foot against the concrete or pavement or yep. you know, whatever surface. Yep. Um, you know, or it there actually is something else that's developing right? From a stress related, you know, my push off's not right because something else is like, I know a lot of runners that, you know, when we start to feel pain, we just go like, Oh, just get a new pair of shoes. Yeah. And, you know, and, and the pain may go away, but temporarily that pain, right. That pain was an yeah. indicator that, Hey, there is actually something going yep. on. Yeah. And I, and I think what you just said is, is kind of going, but also what my thought was earlier about like knowing the difference between pain and hurt, mm -hmm. you know, running, you're going to have discomfort. I mean, right. Anytime I run, I have discomfort. But one thing I tell my athletes or my my patients is you can kind of go through it until it changes something about your run, right? Whether yeah. it's your you're now limping a little bit or your Kate, your gait changes, um, your your know your pace, your cadence may have changed. Like something is now affected. Yeah. Then it's probably time to really kind of analyze the situation, right? What is going on? Do I need to walk a little bit? Do I need more recovery? You know, and that opens up a whole window of conversation of what do I need to do now? Yeah. But in general, if you're running, like, I mean, I think we'd all agree, we are going to have aches and pains throughout the run. But if your pace is the same, your cadence is the same, your gait is the same, like all those are same. Then I do think the probably push through attitude is probably appropriate because nothing has altered yet. Does it still mean you should probably look and assess, you know, am I tight? Do I need to stretch more? Sure. Ask those questions. But I always look like until your life is impacted or your gait changes or something changes due to the pain you're having. Yeah. We got to kind of assess it. And that's, what's great for, you know, there's a lot of therapists out there like myself that would happily, you know, try to see those patients to really right. prevent an injury from arising. Yeah. The injury so, might not be there yet. Right. Yeah. And, and, and there's ways to tell like, okay, you're, you're a couple of weeks away from an injury if you don't change something, right? Like that little bit of pain that maybe was there for four or five steps yeah. on the run today, yep. you know, a week from now, if you don't address it, it may be there for a mile of the run. It, exactly. And I think that's, that's the hard part about, you know, we're creatures of habit. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm almost 40 years old now and I have to train and race and run differently than I did when I was 15, 16, 17. Right. And, you know, I'll tell my patients that I'm like, I can't go out and just throw on my running shoes and go for a jog anymore. Like I actually have to take the time to warm up. Yeah. 
But most of us are so creatures of habit that we just think, well, this is what I've always done. Well, your body is not the same as it was 5, 10, 15 years ago, especially as you as you rack up more and more miles on your body, right? For those of us that are frequent runners. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that I think is is tough in the running community is we have deadlines, right? Like, I, hey, I have a race October 10th. That's a deadline. You need to be yeah. ready by October 10th. So this right. attitude of like, well, if I go to a, if I go to the doctor, if I go see a therapist or something, they're going to tell me to take time off. Yeah. Not necessarily. You know, I, I think that's the common thought is they're going to tell me I can't run. Well, if it's necessary not to run, but at the same time, like cross training, swimming, like looking right. for low load op- alternatives, right, to still get that aerobic or anaerobic base that you're looking to get to prepare you for the race. Right. But it's it is much better. And this is something I'll tell athletes that I come across. It is much better to get to the race day under trained and healthy yeah. than over trained and hurt. Right. Like right. you just be at the race. If you're at the race and you're under trained, but you can race like anything can happen. Yeah. But if you're limping to the start line, it, it'll be a long day for you, you know? So right. knowing your body, knowing, knowing that your body changes over time, knowing your body changes throughout the course of a training season or a training block, yeah. understanding what is normal for you and what is not normal for you. And then seeking out the resources around you or the community around you to help kind of decipher and filter through those situations to, to get you as healthy and prepared as possible for the race that you do have, you know, coming up. Right. And so like you, you made a really good point and I, I, it's something that I think a lot of people don't understand because whether it's just creature of habit, you know, we've done it this way forever but as we age, that warm up has to change. Absolutely. Right. And that and, and not just from a like, okay, I warmed up for 10 minutes before. Now I got to warm up for 20 minutes. Like what you do in the warm up has to change, right? Like the type of stretching. What's yeah. what's and like the best way to go about like maybe not like giving me specific stretches, but like designing, like, okay, this is the type of thing you need to do. Yeah. And I think it's I think it's important right off the bat for people to to understand the importance of a warm up, because yeah. I think for for runners, most of us think a warm up is just I'll take the first mile or two easy, right? right? And they go, but they go right into the run, right? Yeah. Versus anything in the horizontal plane, right? Like yeah. running, as I tell my athletes or any of any of them are runners, like running is linear. We go forward, mm-hmm. and so you use those muscles, your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, like those are repetitively on on the go for a run, but in a warm up, like making sure your body globally is warmed up. So I really prefer, you know, dynamic, a lot of research, more and more Mm -hmm. research obviously supports the dynamic warm up. You know, I always say, tell my athletes, like you should break a sweat, like you should, your heart rate should be up. You should break a sweat um, before you even start that run. Um, And, you know, moving in the lateral plane, um, things like that. But I think for many of us, yeah, we're so used to just going out and jogging yeah. Um, and the other thing I think about too, like if you, if you were so, we're, we live such busy lives nowadays, right? It's 2024. Mm-hmm. We're always on the go. Yeah. Um, running takes time. And so for yeah. those of us, like I have a 60 minute lunch break, I'm going to get a run in very few people that I know will take the time to intentionally warm up for 10 right. minutes, because in their mind, that's 10 minutes they could have been running right. or even to think 10 minutes of a cool down. Well, that's 20 minutes that shortened the run, but at the same time in the big picture, you're going to be a way better, more efficient athlete and a less likely to be injured athlete yeah. by stressing those importance of that warm up and, and the cool down. And that's, as I've gotten older and learned more, both in my profession as a therapist, but also as a runner and endurance athlete, you really value days off and you yeah. really value, or not necessarily days off. Like I did nothing, but cross training, you know, it can, it right. can be go to the pool. It can be just get out and go for a hike or a, a bike ride with your kids or things like that. That's still, your body's working. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, you know, the important part too, but as runners, we have such this mindset of, I got to run, I got to run, I got to run. And we forget the importance of cross training, dynamic, warm up, warm up, cool right. down, recovery, nutrition. Like there's so many pieces of the puzzle outside of just that 60 minute run that you were hoping to do right or the race that you're training for right well and that's one of the things that that a lot of my athletes i work with athletes that are junior high high school and you know and and they aspire to go to college for whatever they're doing or just you know be better and when we do the warm-up they're like i mean can we can we start the workout yet like you know sometimes especially when they're then they're new to it you know and i'm like no, we're, we're still going. And they're like, okay, well, and then they'll, you know, they'll ask like, okay, well, when you go to a race, 
when do you start your warm up? And I said, at least an hour before the race time. Beforehand. Yeah. You know, and, and the tricky like, part about the tricky part about that demographic or that age group that you're working with is they probably could just go out and run. Right. And that's probably what they're used to doing. So I yeah. think it's I mean, it's essential. And that's awesome that you're doing that because you can create a foundation of knowledge and a foundation of habit for them at an early age. And I think for I'm like I said, I'm 39. Um, I wasn't really brought up that way. Right. We just right. threw yeah. our running shoes on and we went out and ran and no pain, no gain. And you just yep. <laughs> you tucked it out. <laughs> Um, but we've learned so much over the years in healthcare and in the running world of the importance of those things. So, I, you know, yeah. if they can learn that at 13, 14, 15 at that age, hopefully that carries through them and they become it becomes a habit for them yeah. that no, I need to spend even 10 minutes. You know, 10 minutes is better than than no minutes in terms right. of and that'll pay off for them down the road. And, and you, I would think that you'd really see a reduction in those injury risks. Right. It's not a promise. Running is still tough on the body, but just the likelihood of them happening will go down yeah so well and that's one of the big things that like that injury prevention right whether it's a foot injury a knee injury hip injury you yeah. know it's 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 doing the things necessary to prevent those injuries from happening or those hurts and in, in in developing and i've had stress fractures so i know that i've pushed obviously pushed through things yeah. that i shouldn't have right and yeah. and got to the point where it's like okay now now you can't run for three <laughs> months you know and it's like oh i shouldn't have done that yeah. And I think that that's where it's just important to know what's normal for you and what's not normal, right? Like if you're getting pain that's new and you haven't experienced this before, you know, really look at the, look at the program. If you're on a, if you're on a training block or training plan, like, am I progressing too quick or am I, you know, am I lacking in my recovery time or what, you know, am I tight in these muscle groups? And that's where, you know, even a free injury screen at a local therapy clinic, you know, right. we, we offer those all the time at ATI. And, you know, it's great when those patients or those athletes take advantage of it, because we can kind of assess something, you know, in 10, 15 minutes to say, Hey, you know, I don't think this is something you need to go to the doc for necessarily, but you might want to stretch this out to prevent you from being in my office in a month right. with an actual injury. And now your race is in jeopardy. Right. So right. knowing your body, knowing those red flags, if you will, of like, this is not normal for me you know, maybe I should have someone look at it, or maybe I should take a day off or maybe stretch or focus on that. But if it's normal for you, it's normal for you. But if it's not, right. you know, knowing your body and being in tune with your body enough to know what is normal and not is I think pretty important. Yeah. Uh, but remembering that, like, in, in like sort of, as you said earlier, like pain is, is sort of a normal part of the running process, yeah. but hurting is, is is not and so it's like yeah. okay if, if if hurting is normal for you then go into a physical therapist going to somebody like myself there's a running coach that can right. be like okay something's wrong with your form yes right? whether it's your foot strike your knees your your body positioning yep. you know, your cadence something's wrong if yep. you know you're always and, I, and I've, I've had that conversation with so many people they're like oh i can't run because it just it hurts my knees i'm like okay well is there a, is there a deformity yeah. Or do you just not run properly, you know, yeah. and, and, and that could also be, you know, shoes, uh, yeah. you know, cause as we talked before about technology and the, and the, and the, the, there's so much going on in technology in providing the right shoe for the way your foot lands. Yeah. Yep. That if you get the wrong shoe, it could yeah. be very detrimental. Right. Yep. Yeah. And I'm a big, like, you know, they, the phrase of like, don't fix it until it's broken. Like, you know, we talk so much in the running community about like, you know, midfoot striking and and this and that, like avoid heel striking. And I think when you get into those runners that are in their, you know, late 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s and beyond, like their, their body is so, it's so on, it's so automatic, right? Their yeah. body's going to run that same way. And they've probably ran that way for years. It would yeah. be hard. Like, what's the phrase? Like, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, right? Like, right. it would be really hard to to train, to teach them to run differently, I think until there's pain, right? And right. when there's pain, you really do need to analyze it, right? Get into a local yeah. running store, a physical therapist that can, that, that knows what they're doing to really analyze your gait and say, Hey, you know, this is what I'm seeing. We need to change something. Cause now yeah. pain, your body's not able to keep up to the demand or the stress that you're putting it under based on the run form that you have. Mm -hmm. um, but until there's pain, one thing I kind of like to think about it, like maybe don't fix what would be deemed as like bad form, right? Like right until there's pain yeah. um but know what would be more efficient in running and we do know that so much research supports what yeah. is more efficient in running and cadence and this and that 
and then look at deficits that your body may have to prevent an injury. Mm -hmm. um, but the body, the human body is so good at adapting that it's probably used to even that quote bad form. Right. But once pain is there, that is, that is, and then being honest with yourself as an athlete and a runner mm -hmm. to say, you know, it's, it's almost humbling to be like, man, I ran for 15 years. You know, why all of a sudden am I getting knee pain? Well, mm -hmm. You've ran on it for 15 years. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, think of those, all those miles, like running is hard on your body, that ground reaction force. I know I had come across this article once that just, and I say this to patients because it's just mind blowing to some extent, but like, if you are a, a really high heel striker, the mm -hmm. ground reaction force is like two to two and a half times your body weight. Yeah. And if you really mathematically think about it, like that's a lot of weight, you know, yeah. for, of those forces up through the muscles in the joints and, uh, so, you know, we know a lot about how to become more efficient as a runner, but like you said, like once there's pain, um, there's a lot of research, uh, resources out there to really help dial in, you know, do we need to change the shoe? Do, are you over pronating? Is your hip drop or your knee dropping in, you know, and technologies have come a long way to, for shoes to help provide some of that, but also strengthen your body in the areas that are necessary or probably weak that may prevent this from escalating to where you're like out of commission for three months right because now right. now you're not racing now you're not running life is kind of miserable because for a lot right. of us you know running is a good stress reliever and it's oh, totally. it's it's you know and that's a whole nother conversation because i think it's it's wonderful i don't know yeah. it, and unless you're a runner it's hard to understand it because a lot of people are like i hate running i'm like yeah i get it but if you push through that right it's it, it can be pretty awesome so no that's exactly what like the first week that i couldn't run um in this most recent injury my wife was like you've got to find something to do <laughs> <laughs> yes i i'm yeah. sure my wife would 100 percent agree to that because i'm sure you know if i and i've i've heard that phrase in like iron man training for the taper yeah. that like th those athletes are irritable you know yeah. they're they're just upset they're angry they're quick to lose their temper and all this stuff and it is like you you get your body gets so used to those endorphin releases and stuff when yeah. you go out and swim bike or run or you know whatever but um, to take that away from an athlete, it's, it's to some extent, it's kind of their identity, right? Yeah. Like I'm a runner, you know, my name's Jerry and I'm a runner, you know, yeah. and, and whether that's good or bad or not to identify as a runner or not, but it, it becomes part of you. And it's, yeah. it's something I think for, for many of us runners we need. Um, yeah. and when you lose that, or it's taken away by a doctor or a therapist or, or someone tells you to stop, um, it, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because I've, I live in a small community outside of a, it's a suburb. And, uh, a couple of years ago I ran, I, I did a fundraiser and I ran every street and it wound up being like 150 miles, but I started and ended from the same point. So it was, okay, you know, doing a lot, a lot of double backs to get to the other parts of town. Yeah. Um, but it, it took me a little over three weeks and it, it got publicity. And so now like people do, like I, I go to the grocery oh, store. Awesome. Oh, you're that guy that runs all over town. Yeah. Right. And yeah. And so, yeah, like it, like three weeks ago when it had been nine weeks since I'd run and like people were like, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and thanks I for the reminder. Like, I know. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I've been injured. I'm sorry. You know, it's like and and now still I'm only up to like, you know, two, three miles at yeah. a time. And so I'm still not getting to all parts of town. So it's like, okay. oh, no, I'm still running. Like, yeah. like you know, but yeah. it's like oh, I haven't seen you'll, you. You'll you see know? me soon. I'll, I'll build up. Yeah. Right. You know, Um but it's, you know, in, in mine was an Achilles injury, which, you know, connects to the foot and a lot of people get in, in, in part of that, you know, through, through me trying to push through it developed, um, a little bit like plantar fasciitis, and, yeah. you know, things like that. And that's a very common, like running injury specifically, but I think very. it's also very common with people that just are, are, are sedentary yes. and then maybe they change jobs where they got to walk around a lot more or, you know, go on a vacation where you're walking around, you know, go to Disney yeah. world and you're not used to walking around or anything. And, yep. you know, your plantar fasciitis starts acting up. Like yep. what is it that we can do to, to help? Is it, is it just flat out stretching and being more active or are there other things yeah. that people can do to like make sure that our feet are prepared when we go to do something? Yeah, great question. I think there's a lot of things. Uh, for one, I think we live in a world where, and we see this more in, in women, and obviously during the summer with shoes that don't provide the greatest support mm -hmm. because they're more fashionable, right? Um, yep. I see a lot of the, is it the Converse, um, the Dr. J, the Converse yep. shoes, and those are super popular, or the Jordan, you know, the Jordans and this and that, and and we wear we focus more on fashion rather than function. Right. 
And, yep. and for most of us that don't have never had plantar fasciitis, like by all means, wear, wear the fashionable shoe that you want to wear. Um, but like I have said, you know, a couple of times, like, I think just knowing, you know, that moment that you, like you said, you changed jobs and now you're on your feet more like knowing that, Hey, I'm going to be on my feet more before I was at a desk job. You know, this is going to be a, a transition for my body to get used to it. And right. Maybe I need a shoe that provides a little more support. I'm going to be up more. It's going to be weight, you know, I'm going to be weight bearing through my feet all day long now. Um, one kind of simple test that I like to do and is to take a shoe and if I can twist it, if I can twist it and it basically twists at its midpoint, I would just tell a patient like it doesn't really provide you a lot of support, you know, and you're obviously here for foot pain, might want to consider a shoe that when you twist doesn't doesn't twist or that when you twist it, it doesn't twist at its midpoint. Right. Um, and any local running store would be able to provide you with a great example of a shoe that wouldn't do that. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, basic stretches, I think it goes back to what we've talked about, like emphasizing, you know, for in the running population, emphasizing a warm up and a cool down, because those are things that get neglected. Yeah. Um, and we're so used to just run, run, run. And those miles build up and build up and build up and those tissues break down and break down and break down. And so it's, you know, important to emphasize the little things, you know, uh, post run, take a frozen water bottle and roll your foot out. You know, we do it for the IT band and the quad and the hamstrings and things like that. But Right. The bottom of the foot's pretty important. That's the first thing that hits the ground when you're running. Yeah. Um, and but we 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 in healthcare, especially we we've we see so much. We're reactive medicine, right? We mm -hmm. think we you come into me with an injury with a script from the doctor that says I have plantar fasciitis. We treat it. That's reactive, right? We're reacting to the problem right. versus preventative medicine. And I think that that's a crucial part of running and life in general is is thinking preventative. What do I need to do? to prevent an injury. And, right. and the hard part is we're, like I said, we're creatures of habit and until mm -hmm. something breaks, we don't fix it. Yeah. And so we don't really think preventative medicine. And I think for runners, the easiest preventative that my mind goes to is cross training. You know, you don't need to always run. Yeah. And I think that's a hard, that's an embedded mindset for runners is I run and run yeah. and run. And I've, I've jokingly said, I've done a number of marathons and I jokingly say, I really hate it. I hate the training of a marathon. And patients are, you know, people are like, why? And I'm like, because it's so monotonous because yeah. every day is run. And as a triathlete, primarily it's cross training, right? I'm either swimming, yeah. biking or running or, or a combination of both in one day, but I don't have to run every day. And I think yeah. it's mentally and physically better on my body to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one thing I think too, is like when you are exercising, whether you're hiking, walking, swimming, biking, running, your heart and body just know it has to react. It has to pump more blood to your muscles and it has to respond to the stress that you're putting it under, whether it's anaerobic, aerobic. The hardest one on your body of all those is the run because yeah. of the reaction forces to the ground. Right. So people think that if I don't run, I'm going to lose my fitness. Not necessarily. You can almost enhance your fitness by getting in a pool and swimming mm -hmm. um, or, or biking, right? There's no impact yeah. with biking. So I think when it comes to that plantar fasciitis stuff, just you know, think preventative rather than reactive. Don't wait necessarily for your foot to bother you to one, change your shoes out or to um, roll it out with an ice pack or stretch your calves. I mean, a simple calf stretch can go a long way, both, you know, knee bent and knee straight for that soleus and the gastroc. But those are the first things that are really loading the body when you hit the ground. And yeah. we often neglect them until we're limping up our steps back into our house right. after a 10 mile run because now our feet hurt. So... <laughs> Well, and it doesn't, and like to go along with that, like it, it immediately I start thinking, okay, well for the person that gets to 50, 60, 75 in, I mean, we all hear about these, these people that go out and do marathons at that age. Yeah. And, you know, you, you occasionally hear like, oh my gosh, this, you know, grandmother of 14 that finished a marathon, you know, whatever. Yeah. And, it, and it makes big news, but it, it, from a, from a, preventative injury standpoint like we should be able to all get there yeah right like but we don't take care of our body and so it, whether it's the joints you know don't operate like they should anymore the, the muscles are not as flexible as they should or don't move as well the fascia tightens up like all of those things are things that whether it's strictly running or cross training mm -hmm. or just just movement right and all of that stuff leads to a much better quality of life down the road. Oh yeah. And I, you know, I'm amazed that when I go to races and you see those in their sixties, seventies, eighties doing marathons. And first thing I ask is when did they start doing it? Because if yeah. they've been able to run 
marathons for 40, 50 years, like my hat is completely off to them because that is dedication and the, just to think of the miles on their body. So they must right. be doing something right in order to sustain that, you know, yeah. that um, those stresses for so many years. But if you really talk to a lot of those people too, they run like two to three times a week. Like yeah. they're not doing like many of us, like six to seven times a week or whatever yeah. it is, you know, that's a lot. And I think as we get older, you know, our bodies are not the same as they were 15, 20 years ago, and we can't treat them the same. And it's hard to break out of those habits at times. But, and I think that that's where, you know, being surrounded by resources of other runners or, you know, there's so many communities and every, I feel like every town nowadays has a local run, run club or this right. and that, and, you know, surround yourself with people who are, who are with you on the journey too, because it can be tough to kind of go at a running, you know, whether you're training for your first marathon or half marathon or something by yourself, but surround yeah. yourself with other people um, that have done it before or yeah. are, are able to kind of walk you through some of those aches and pains and kind of educate you along the way too. Cause that, that can pay off in the big picture too. Right. And, but keeping in mind that just because somebody else had an ache and pain doesn't mean that yours is going to be the same thing. Right. Like, cause that, that can be scary yes. sometimes is, you know, and, and I try to, I've had multiple injuries. And so it's like, you know, I try to be like, oh, okay, wait a minute. Like I had something that developed into that from, you know, that area of my yep. foot or ankle, um, trying not to scare them, but being like, okay, wait, we, we got to take this serious because yep. things can develop. Yeah. No, no two athletes are the same, you know, and that's, right. that's one of my, I guess, complaints you could say about like, you know, these generic, training programs, right. That are written and you can Google, you know, and pull up a thousand different marathon training plan, blah, 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 blah. Right. And, and while those give you a good template, it's not tailored to you. Right. Yeah. And, you know, you and I can follow the same, you know, half marathon plan and we can, I could get injured and you couldn't, you know, right. or you might not. And, and why is that? I don't know. Like my body is not your body, right. It's yeah. different than yours. And so for us to follow the same plan is, is tough, but I think that that's where knowing, Again, having those resources around you, whether it's a coach or a physical therapist that specializes in running or a local run club or, or someone you're connected to, to, to know how to tailor those. Like, hey, right. my foot's been hurting when I get up to six, seven, eight miles. Okay, well, what do we need to do to modify that? You know, or my friend had those similar symptoms and this is what they did, you know, and they mm -hmm. found success with that. And it might not work for you, but let's, let's try that. And, right. and, uh, yeah, it's it, that's a tough one because I've had patient I've had a I had a patient recently that was a right knee certain right, right total knee and they had previously had their left knee done and their left knee was like did perfect and yeah. and we're struggling on the right knee and it's and they're like I did so well with my left and I'm like it, it, we're not on your left anymore right like you expect yeah. it to go the same and it's not and yeah and uh, as much as you want to do the same things that worked on the left it it doesn't always work out that way right well and that's that's. I've had so many people when I tell them like, you know, oh, you know, tore, I had to tear my Achilles and like, oh my gosh, like this horror stories of, you know, yeah, you know, oh, I've, I've never been able to walk the same after I had mine and da, da, da. And I was like, okay, oh, well, I, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't know if you did the same PT. I don't know if you yeah. knew, like what your, and, and also what your, what your status was before you got hurt. Right. Like, yep. you know, how, how good a shape were you in? Not just from a physical fitness standpoint, but like the muscles, the joints, like, Yep. You know, what were you doing before plays a big yeah. part in how your recovery comes afterwards. Yeah. And there, and to that point too, there's like, there's too many variables to compare, Yeah, you know, one person's injury to another person's injury. And, and I, I like to thank Dr. Google for that because mm -hmm. we see that all the time in healthcare, right? Where yeah. I read online that this and this and this can go wrong. And I'm like, well, very few people post the successful stories of their plantar fasciitis journey or whatever you just hear the horror stories so then you right. read them you know on 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 the internet and you're like this is going to happen to me i know it i'm like well no that's it you know this is why i'm here to help you yeah. <laughs> um yeah. but we almost psych ourselves out when we hear those stories of other injuries that other people have had and we just assume it's going to happen to us too and and right and then and your background's different than mine and your makeup's different than mine like everything is so different that you can't right you can't just assume, make that assumption. So. Yep. Well, and that's one of the things I, I immediately tell everybody that I work with on forum, whether they're a, a teenager or an adult, because I work with a lot of adults that I don't necessarily work with them on a full on training plan, but they come to me and they're just like, I just need to run more efficiently and not be in pain. And so, you know, I adjust their form based on, and, and the older they get, the more I stress, 
like I'm going to try and do it based on what is ideal. But if you've had ankle injuries, you Correct. know, especially a broken bone or something and uh, like, you know, there's scar yes. tissue, there's, there's deformities from the way it should be perfect. Right. And it, I say deformity, it's not because it's just the way your body yep. healed from a previous injury that yep. like, yep. you may not be able to flex your foot the way it needs to flex to have the ideal yep. form. And so we adjust and, yep. and, and create that, what's good for you. Yep. You just so. need to find kind of a happy medium, right? We know yeah. this is what would be deemed ideal. Yeah. We know based on your hip prior history of injuries or, you know, the, the way you've ran for so many years, like we're only going to get so far to that ideal form. Right. But the key thing is we want to get you running pain free. You, you yeah. know, if you're running pain free and, Someone looks at you and you're like, wow, their form's terrible, but you are running pain-free now and you can be efficient at that. And you're running the times and the pace or whatever, whatever your goal is yeah. great. You know, like there's, there's where you need to kind of settle in versus continuing right. on that journey to ideal because yeah. now you're almost asking for a problem, right? You've changed right. too much um, that now your hips working differently, your back's working differently. Like other muscles are now responding to this new form and your body's not used to it when you've ran a certain way for years you're pain-free let's let's run there right let's stay right. there um until again until we have a reason to change right well and i mean i think that's a that's a huge piece of it because like it and and with that is you know hey i've run in this shoe or this brand of shoe for years and then now it's not working for me anymore you know, yeah. and we, we all have brand loyalty to different things, but it's like, sometimes it's like, okay, well, it's time to change whether it's, yeah. and sometimes it's not you. Sometimes it's the shoe. Like, yeah, you know, I, I joke that I've, I've been in the same new balance model for 15 cycles of shoes and they just came out with, they just, they like redid the whole shoe. And I'm like, Oh, okay. oh my gosh. I don't like, <laughs> is this going to work for me now? Or is it not? Yeah. Cause they changed the drop. They changed it. And I'm like, Oh yeah. my gosh. Now am I going to be finding a new shoe? Thankfully, of course, there's, there's still previous versions I can buy. Right. Correct. That are still out yeah. there. So uh, it, it's probably something I'm not going to have to deal with for a year or two before the, the, you know, the supply is gone. Yeah. And then I'll have to go like, okay, I got to try the new version and see, <laughs> you know, if it's going to work or not. Yeah. Um, and but that's something that, that, you know, it's, it's something we need to pay attention to and not just get siloed into this is just the way it's always been. Correct. Yeah. And I, th I think you're right. I think so many runners, like I run in Nikes or I run in Saucony or Asics or something. And we have this like ingrained loyalty to that brand. Like they're like, we're a sponsored athlete by them and right. we must wear their shoe. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like I said, like I've, I've, I've been one of those lucky runners that have never had like an issue to where I've needed to change brands or things mm -hmm. like that. Like I've been a lucky, you know, and I know I can't speak for everyone, but you know, been able to run in whatever shoe I've ran in. It's, it's worked for me minus yeah. certain things here, or there, but um, at the same time, every shoe is a little different. Like if yeah. you do need more support, a Nike is probably not your goal. Yeah. Um, so if you don't need support, you know, you can run in something more that has less of a drop or things like that. Right. There's, and that's the shoe, the shoe evolution has come so far that there are people out there and resources out there to provide you the shoe that fits your body. Right. Um, and, and just, you know, getting into your local running store and learning about that. And yeah. it, that can really pay off because the foot and the shoe are the first thing to hit the ground. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of starts there. And then we yeah. see a lot of changes for up the chain from that. Right. Hey, you got to go. Sorry. No, you're good. You got, you got to run No. Sorry about that. I was, okay. we were doing so good. We're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> if I need to re do something, my father. No, you're good. No, you're good. She opened the door and I'm like, go away, go away. <laughs> almost done, Cora. <laughs> 35 minutes. We did awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Almost done, Ray. Um, okay. So, and, and then with like foot injuries specifically. Yeah. Um, so you've got something and you go, okay, okay, it's bad enough. I'm going to go see a physical therapist. I'm going to get this addressed um, and start working on it. Like, I know there's a, there, there's a segment of the population. I You could probably speak to exactly how much of this is that like 
you give the homework to and they show back up the next appointment and you're like, oh, you didn't do anything. <laughs> um, right. There's a segment that does that, but there's also a segment that's like the serious, like, okay, we got to get to, we're going we're gonna to do everything. And all of a sudden it starts to feel better. Yep. But it's not yet healed. Right. Yes. Like there's that, that false hope of, oh, everything's good. Like, it, you know, like when the doctor says, okay, I'm going to give you this prescription and it's, you know, take two pills of this for 15 days to get this infection to go away. And after eight days, you're like, oh, I feel great. And you stop taking it. Like it's not, it's yeah. Right. Exactly. It's there's that point of like, okay, wait, you feel great, but we still have to finish. Correct. Yeah. And I, and I try to tell almost every single one of my patients on discharge day, it's not the end of the road. It's the start yeah. of the, it's the start of the journey. Now, like the ball's in your court, you know, my job, and I've said this, you know, I've, as, as I've been a therapist longer and longer, I really have kind of steered away from the the stress of feeling like I have to fix everybody mm -hmm. um, and taking that kind of burden off myself. It's like, well, so-and-so didn't get better. But I think as I've gotten older, I've learned I have to become more of an educator, right? My, I, even right. at three times a week, if I see a patient three times a week for an hour, I'm three hours of their week. I am such a small piece of that puzzle right. in turn. And I can't walk home and hold their hand and watch them do their exercises, right? And right. so- you know, being an educator, a therapist, but being an educator, right? Here's the tools. Here's what you need to do. Yeah. And I promise like things will continue to get better, but you have to keep at it. It's a, it's a yeah. journey. And I think runners understand that, right? Because runners know what it's like to be, you know, they have discipline, they're motivated, you know, it, for your most runners, right? They're motivated. Yeah. They're, they're willing to push through some discomfort and really get out there and, and try something hard running for a lot of yeah. people. A lot of people don't even try running, right. That running, right. Yep. I hate running. Well, okay. And that's fine. Like, you know, I'm um, not asking you to go run, but if yeah. for those of us that do, we know what, what dedication takes like, what commitment takes like, mm -hmm. and um, that's, what's great about running. But yeah, I mean, as, as you have to educate the athlete or the patient to say, you know, I know you're still getting those aches and pains or you're even on the tail end of the pain that you were getting Right. That doesn't mean you can stop your exercises. Like, right. keep in mind of what led you to that therapist or that doctor's mm -hmm. office in the first place. It was a breakdown in these, you know, A, B, C, D in these areas. Yeah. Continue on with those things. You know, going back to the preventative medicine, don't always be reactive, right? We yeah. don't, we don't always need to wait for an injury to present itself, but, you know, have your run form looked at, have your, have, get into the podiatrist and have your feet looked at, you know, all those right. little things and, and it's hard. Life is busy. Most of us sure. are, you know, kids, jobs, this and that. Like life certainly gets in the way, and and running is the hobby, right? But yeah. um, we also have one body, and and yeah. we're supposed to carry this through life, right? So we should take yeah. care of it, and yeah. and we don't always, we shouldn't always wait um, for someone someone to say something's wrong to stop running or this and that. Like be preventative, stretch, yeah. you know, get up. <laughs> I had had a patient tell me something the other day that I was like, that's kind of interesting. So they said we should learn more from the animal world, meaning when you see a dog or a cat first wake up, the first thing they do is stretch. Oh yeah. And it's kind of true. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I guess they do. They wake up and you see them mm -hmm. stretch. And then I think to us as humans, like the first thing I do is I roll out of bed and I go turn the coffee pot on. I don't right. stretch. And I'm not yeah. saying you need to wake, you know, every person needs to wake up and spend 15 minutes stretching their calves out and their hamstrings right. and rolling out. Like I, yeah. I'm realistic. I understand. But maybe there's something there, right? Taking yeah. taking things that other, you know, the animal world does and applying it. And it, it may not mean wake up and do it, but stretch before you run, stretch yeah. after you run. Take going back to what we were saying earlier about warming up and cooling down. There's a lot of validity to that, especially as we get older. Um, yeah. that becomes more and more important. Yeah. Well, and one of the things that I tell all my athletes, because you know, it it at the age that I work with them, like you said earlier, it's like, they can just go out and run and it's like, yeah. oh, it's no big deal. Right. <laughs> it's like no warm up. And I remember doing that in those days. Um, but then I'll tell them, I'm like, cause you know, I, I pay attention to what, you know, the professionals are doing and okay. What's this? And like some of the professional track athletes, you know, they've got a three, four five hour warm up before yeah. they do their workout. Now, yes. granted, I get it. They're professional. They get paid to do that. That's all they, you know, like that's their time. They're they not, time. they're not, you know, working a nine to five, you know, yep. um, and so, you know, I get that that piece of it, but if, if they're willing to put in three to five hours for their warm up, mm -hmm. you can find 15 to 20 minutes yep. yeah. to make sure that you at least get the body in the, in that, you know, in, in, into your point about waking up. I, I mean, 
when you have any kind of injury, I think you, you meet, especially with a, with a foot or ankle injury, um, or just, you know, the, the start of an injury. I think we all, as we age, we start, we get out of bed and we go, Oh, this hurts. Okay. Or this hurts. hurts. <laughs> I'm stiff. I can't walk very yeah. well, you know, and then maybe, you know, you walk down the hallway to turn the coffee pot on or feed the dogs or whatever. And it's yeah. like, okay, now it's starting to loosen up. Yep. But it's that same stiffness and everything before, if you just go straight to a run, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like how much damage are you, are you yeah. increasing to yeah. what's already potentially there? Yeah. What you just said kind of made me chuckle because I had had a patient a few years ago who was probably in his upper seventies and he, we were seeing him for like low back pain. Mm -hmm. And so I always asked the, I asked the patient like, well, you know, is it worse in the morning or worse at night? This, you know, and that, and he's like, it's, it's really stiff in the morning. And I'm like, okay. You know, most of my follow-up question was like, well, how long does it take to loosen up? You know, like lunchtime, like half the day, you know, you get up moving. He's like, oh, by the time I go to the bathroom, like get up and get some water and go to the bathroom. And I'm like, so within the first few minutes and he goes, yeah. And I go, and then you have no back pain. He goes, yeah. And I'm like, that's pretty normal. I go, you, yeah. I go, you're se upper seventies. Like he might've been yeah. 80. I'm just like, you should be grateful. <laughs> you know, I think to myself, I'm like, I'm almost 40. And I'm like, my back hurts from time. And it takes longer than that to loosen up. Right. But again, to him, his mind was so embedded of what he had never had a back, you know? So yeah. he, he was such a creature of habit to him. That was not normal. And I'm like, well, your back's 80 years old or 78 right. years old. Like you're going to expect those aches and pains, but you can't, like, I don't think he was a runner, but like, if, if he were like, he couldn't yeah. go out and just run like he always had, like, yeah, your, your body's not the same as it was, you know, it's, yeah. and to your point, like, I think it's, it's almost laughable now. Cause I'm just at, a, at that age where I have, I've gained so much knowledge. You almost wish you could go to your younger self and, right. and tell yourself. Um, but it's, I'm at that age now where like, man, I'd love to go play like pickup basketball or this and that. And my first thought was like, oh man, I don't want to get hurt right. <laughs> <laughs> versus, you know, when I was 16, 17, like you wouldn't have that thought at all. You just went yeah. out and played pickup basketball and didn't think right. about it. Now I'm like, Oh God, I don't want to get hurt. Or I don't want to hurt yeah. my back or something. Yep. Um, or, but or, you know, it, you just go from sport to sport. Yes. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. you know, and, and you wouldn't think anything of it and you wouldn't realize no. that, you know, each sport has its, it's, you know, specific. And I remember this from, uh, you know, when people talk about uh, when Michael Jordan came out of retirement, Yeah. you know, that, that first half a season or whatever that he came back. And I remember listening to his, his personal trainer and he was like, you know, when he said he wanted to do that, he was like, you can't do this right now. You, you're not in basketball shape. You're in baseball yeah. shape. Like it's a completely yeah, it's different. different body, Yep. you know, and, yeah. and that's where that cross training can help because Correct. if, if all you do is run and then you go play pickup basketball, yes. well, yeah, you're going to be sore in different places because yeah. you're using different muscles and, and you're yep. opening yourself up to injury. Correct. You know, I had a, a friend of mine that I knew recently that tore his Achilles um, and he did it playing pickup soccer um, the day after a 20 mile run. And yeah. so I kind of chuckle in my head. I'm like, could you not see that coming? Or like, mm -hmm. you know, what went through your head? Not saying that I, I could have predicted he would tear his Achilles. Right. But in my head, I'm like, those are completely different. Like you mm -hmm. won your 20 mile run. Like you're not that's an aerobic right you're yeah. you're slow pace for 20 miles yeah and then you go play anaerobic soccer and, and it's multi-directional and you're changing mm -hmm. position you're planting you're cutting i'm like i'm not saying they're connected but should have thought that through a little bit more right. on, yeah shouldn't follow up with you know pick up soccer the day after a 20 mile run and but again right. until he's you know he probably had no reason to think that he wouldn't be okay right. to do that you know yeah. and that's the tricky tricky part too with injuries is you know, until you have one, you're not yep. really going to change from the plan that you've always done. Right. Um, but yeah. Right. And so from a preventative standpoint, basically it's like do as much as you can of different activities Yeah. to just express your body in different ways to, to ways. wake yeah. different things up. And, and if something is painful, you know, like obviously slow that part for yep. a couple of days. And if the pain doesn't go away, then get it checked out. Yeah. And get it checked out. I mean, there, there are so many good therapists out there um, that can look at your running and it may not be, it may not mean you're going to become a patient, right? Like those, like right. I said, those free injury screens are fantastic because we can yeah. get in and kind of give you our two cents or, or even if it is, it's better to be, I think, you know, it's better to get in too early than wait too long. Right. And that's a yeah. common thing we see all the time in healthcare is like, 
Oh, I had rotator cuff surgery. Well, how long has it been bothering you? Oh, 18 years, like 18 right. years. Like I'm not saying you needed a surgery 18 years ago, but had you taken the necessary steps 18 years ago to get it checked out, like you made, yeah. you could have put off this sort of stuff. And, right. and this kind of ties in, at least the way my mind thought is like to a different, a whole different time for conversation, but life world, the world is so different now with, with cross training and athletes where, you know, my son is eight and we're already having these conversations of travel baseball and, you know, right. this stuff and that, and it's like, my goodness, like I played baseball in college and I love baseball, but the thought of travel at eight is almost like, man, they're just, they're making these kids pick a sport right. at such a younger age where you play it year round. And like, yeah. to what you just said, like, I remember as a kid, when baseball ended, I didn't pick up a baseball. I went and picked up a football, right? right. Like we, then yeah. I played football. And then when football ended, I picked up a basketball right. and, and that, you know, without kind of being told it was, it was cross training, right? I was oh, doing yeah. different sports and I was doing different things. And you see that less and less, I think, in today's world where kids are playing one sport. And and I'm, I'm not saying there's a connection to, to injuries, but there probably is. Like, I would yeah. bet that there's research out there to support we've seen an upkick in, in shoulder injuries or rotator right. cuff tears or this and that because kids are, you know, in the thrower, like they're throwing so much more or in runners, like they're running they're running so much more um, yeah. than they used to because they're not swimming in the winter or, you know, we're yeah. doing something different and yeah. the body is multifunctional and multi-purpose and, and we need it to do a variety of things to just get through life, let alone, yeah. you know, narrow it down to one specific sport. And it's, it's hard to ingrain that in, in people. Right. Well, it is. And it's, it's, it, unfortunately the sports to a point, you know, in our country has become, everybody's like, Oh, that's my ticket. Yeah. Oh, I can make yeah. it. And, and, and there's a lot of money yeah. to be made And Yes. And for a very small percentage of people, yeah. that's true. Um, yes. But it's not everybody, you know, no. and it's, it's sports is, is a great, you know, it's a great tool to learn life lessons. It'll tell you so much about, you know, and, and as we talked about earlier, it's a, it's a running is a metaphor for life. That's going to push you through so many different challenges. Yeah. And yep. especially if you know people ask me all the time, like, okay, what do you listen to when you go on a, like, 14 mile run and i'm like i don't listen to anything yeah like i just i don't have headphones and yeah. part of it is you know like i i've been thankfully not like in a in a too detrimental of a way but i've been hit by car three times oh wow right okay. and so it's like i want to pay attention to traffic i yeah. want to hear if somebody's coming yeah. um i want to hear dogs because i run yeah. sometimes like out in the country yep oh and so it's like okay if there's a dog that's just loose i want to hear yep. that i don't want to be just zoned out into a yep you know, music or a podcast or whatever. Yeah. Um, but the other piece of it is it, it, it challenges you mentally because you're yes. by yourself. Yes. I had read, a well, and I went in, in the triathlon world, obviously like in marathons, you can choose to use music sure. or something like that too. So that's a little different, but yeah. in the triathlon world, you are not allowed to use music. So right. I, you know, I think of it that way too, is, you know, you should probably practice the way right. you're going to race because yep. not only is it a safety thing, which you touched on, but like in a triathlon, you don't get to use music at all. It's banned. Um, yeah. I had read a book. Uh, I don't know if you know who Chrissy Wellington is. She's a hall yeah. of fame, uh, triathlete, um, women's phenomenal. Um, I think she was like 13 and 0 in Ironmans or something like that. Wow. But in her book, she talks about her coach had put her or two things that stood out from her book. One, she wasn't allowed her allowed water at the pool deck when she swam Oh wow! because you don't get water during a race. And yeah. I'm like, that sounds torturous, but I get his thought, right? Like, or the coach's right. thought of like, you don't get to have water during the swim. So, yeah. um, so it, she didn't have water on the pool. And then she had to run a marathon in a, tr on a treadmill in a closet Ooh. with no music to develop mental toughness. Yeah. And so she was, she described it as like, you could touch both walls, you know, when you put your arms oh, out to the gosh. side and it based it, I pictured in my head, like just the treadmill fit in this closet. Yeah. Yeah. And she ran a, she ran a marathon on it and it was literally to just train her mentally to, to deal with the agony of what that would feel like. Cause you're, yeah. and I say this, you know, to, to people too, like with an Ironman or, or marathon too, like it becomes such a mental game. Like the oh, yeah. longer the race is so mental. And they're like, well, I'm like, it's hard physically. Yes. You train for the physical side of it. Right. It's hard to train your body for the mental side of it. Mm -hmm. What that grueling day is like. And, and you don't have thoughts of, I love this. This is great. I can't, I can't wait to do this again next year. Like it's no, yeah. it's none of those. It's why did I sign up for this? Right. My feet hurt. My hip hurts my stomach hurts. I got a cramp. Like your brain yeah. is processing all of those, all those negative thoughts. 
and you can't wait to race day to have to deal with them. Right. Yeah. And that's why you want to train that way, whether it's to choose not to use music periodically, maybe you need right. it sometimes fine yeah. um, periodically. But, you know, one thing I like to say is, you know, make your training the blood, sweat and tears and the agony. So race day is the is the payoff. Right. Race right. day is like yeah. the icing on the cake for all the hard work that you put in. But if you don't put the work in race day is going to suck yeah. oh, <laughs> if you yeah. want to run whatever you're, you know, if you want to yeah, run a specific goal, yeah. time or something like that, like yeah. if your goal is finish it, like, you know, maybe discontinue disregard what I just said, but like, right. if your goal is a specific time, you know, train for it, you know, yeah. and, and, and make those days where you want to quit, you want to give up because as hard as it is, you don't want those as options in your brain on race yeah. day. Right. And, yeah. and, you know, and that's where, you know, what I said early on in our conversation today is, Get to the start line as healthy as you can to give yourself that best chance to finish right. versus limping to the fit, to the start line because you overtrained right. or didn't listen to those cues that your body gave you when your foot hurt, your, mm-hmm. your, your hip hurt or knee hurt, and yeah. you just push through because no pain, no gain. And here you are right. limping to the finish line still with a goal of whatever. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> right. So there's well, this- it's, it's funny you say that because the, the, the race that I, it was a one mile indoor race. Uh, okay. indoor track race that i hurt my achilles in uh it it you can watch it on video you can see exactly where it like you could my stride changes and yeah. it was halfway through the race and when it started and i could feel my heel hitting the ground and i was like okay this isn't good this hurts yeah. this isn't good but i was in first place and so i was like but the narrative i told myself was okay as soon as this guy passes me i'm gonna step off the track yeah. but i can't step off i'm in first place i can't yeah. step off i've got to keep yeah. going Right. Yep. And I just kept telling myself that narrative and I, I, I wound up, I won the race by a second and he was oh, like wow. charging to come again. Like if it would have been, <laughs> you know, 10 meters more, I would have stepped off the track, Yeah, you know, right there. And, but I was like, like, you could see it on the video. And my wife was like, what would you, I was like, I was just thinking, just, just go until he passes me. That's yeah. all I was thinking. I wasn't thinking yeah. run harder. I was slowing yep. down. I was just like, you know, this sucks. This hurts. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, but, but there is that other side that we have to, you know, we have to be smart enough sometimes to listen to and go like, okay, we're past the point. Correct. Like everything we're doing now is just more damaging. And that's where I think too, like, yeah, when you've seen your form change, right. Or something is now altered because of the pain you're having race is a little different, right. In your case, like I would have done exactly what you did. Like yeah. the end is in sight. That's race day. Right. You, you kind of just, you go for it. Right. And deal right. with the consequences later, more or less. Right. Um, but in training, you know, humble yourself enough as an athlete or a runner yeah. to, to say, Hey, this hurts. Like maybe I don't do that run that I had planned for tomorrow. Maybe I need to cross train or take a day off um, right. or get in to see a doctor or a, th- a therapist that can look at me and kind of help me along. Um, but it's, it's tough to humble ourselves. We, yeah. we tend to, we tend to be stubborn and we think like, oh, it'll get better. It'll get better. Yeah. And it, it, it might not, you know, better to yeah. be proactive than, than again, reactive and deal yeah. with the not running option. That's going to be presented to you probably right. by a doctor. So. Right. Yep. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I look back at it and go like, man, I just should have just stepped off the track as soon as it hurt, <laughs> you know, cause, cause that nine weeks may have turned into four weeks that I didn't have to run. Yeah. You know? And so it's like, I mean, Hindsight's 2020. 20, and you just, and of course you just yep. still never know. It could have still been nine weeks, but, right. um, you know, but, but yeah, there's, and, and, and that's the thing I think that it, it, you know, again, going back to the, you know, running is such a, a life lesson is that you go like, okay, now I, now I know, okay, read those signs when they come up again. Yep. Right. Cause like you said, like so many people experience pain running on a, on a yearly basis, like statistically, something's going to happen again yeah. if I continue yep. to run. And Correct. so it's like, read those signs earlier in the yep. process so yeah. that, you know, that, that while I'm still trying to be as proactive and preventative as possible, reactively, there's going to be something that has to be done Correct. somewhere down the road. Yep. Yeah. I mean, treat the hurt before it becomes an injury. Yeah. Right. Or, or, or do something about the hurt. It, it doesn't yeah. mean, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get told to stop running. Yeah. Um, but just know what to do to help mitigate it to become something where like in your case, like you're told don't run for nine weeks. Like that's yeah. a long time. And yeah. like we, you know, we talked about that's hard mentally too. Like now yeah. you have to process that of like, I got to go two over two months of no running. Like 
that's not fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, you know, and, and you probably had a goal or another race that you wanted to do. Yeah. And now that got side railed because of that, you know, or sidetracked yeah. because of that. And, and so, so much, you know, don't let the small hurt become something. And I'm, yeah. and I'm by no means saying, you know, go, you know, the smallest little ache and pain, go rush off to the doctor, but, right. but humble yourself enough to look and say, Hey, you know, that's, that pain is new. I haven't had that pain before. Hmm. I wonder what could have caused that, you know, get in right. for that free injury screen and have yeah. someone tell you like, Hey, you know, your hip's pretty weak. Like that could be leading to your knee pain. Here are some exercises. Just be consistent doing them. Continue to run if you need to, or if yeah. you can until, you know, you find that your symptoms are changing, you know, for right. or worsening and then, you know, come back to me, here's my card and, and we'll go from there. Um, yeah. so. Well, and another see thing that all the time that is like, like you said, with the, the, you know, 18 years since, maybe the road rotator cuff injury like the sooner that you go in like the more accurate like the diagnosis can be right like as far right. as like as far as the cause at least correct like, because i mean i know i've 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 heard people that are you know my athletes that you know oh well you know I, i've had this pain in my in my knee or my foot or my ankle i'm like oh okay well well when did it start oh like two months ago I'm yeah like, <laughs> You, know, and you never said anything? these things yeah. like, you know like <laughs> yeah i'm like okay well what what ha i don't remember what happened you know yeah. and i'm like okay that's like you know when it's when it's 24 hours from when it started you're much more likely to go i remember i was running on this yeah you know path and i took yep. this weird step or yeah. you know it's it's right here when it happened versus you know like, two months I, back. i've been dealing with yeah. it for two months i can't tell you when it started yeah yeah. And we, yeah, we, it just makes me laugh because we see that all the time. Right. Of yeah. like, I just thought it would get better. And yeah. you're right. Like I'm, I'm probably guilty of the same thing. Like I've, mm -hmm. I've had two shoulder surgeries and I probably had those same thoughts of it'll get better. You know, yeah. I'm not going to tell the coach that my shoulder hurts or this or that, but right. um, I think, like you said, just, you know, if you, if you just address it initially and it doesn't mean run to the doctor, it just yeah. means you know, take the steps to know that this is something new. My foot now hurts. I haven't had foot pain. Maybe I should go in and get a screen or just, or, right. you know, figure out what's going on to prevent it from having those conversations two right. months down the road to say, Hey, because now, now you as the coach, right. You got to alter their plan. You got to figure right. out, you know, the severity of it. Now you do have to get into the doctor and, mm -hmm. and um, it's, it's just a cascade effect of, Yep. negative negative things not good things yep. right so yep. we could have addressed this two months ago with some simple stretches or exercises or a day off or right or at or right um you know rest ice recovery elevation right. or whatever it is right. just simple simple at home remedies um yeah. and and could have prevented it, a full-blown injury right not always right but sure decrease the chance yeah well and then and then you also decrease that stressor of you know in 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 forget the time off stressor, but the stressor that I know a lot of people go through of like, oh, now I got to deal with going to physical therapy three times a week yeah. or, you know, whatever that case is it's like, oh, and, and yep. cause that's a, that's a whole nother additional stressor, especially when it comes yep. to, you know, finances and the way the world is right now. And, you know, dealing with your health insurance and all those things, it's like, yep. you know, it, it, sometimes it can be a, a two or three visit. Oh, we just need yep. to address this real yep. quick versus like, okay, now we're on a, now we're on a timeline that's going to take us through the next four months. Yeah. One, you know. one thing that we really kind of talk a lot, a lot in our profession as, as physical therapists is, is PT first thinking, mm -hmm. almost thinking of PT as preventative. Yeah. Um, you know, we no longer live, at least in, I'm here in Illinois, like we have what's called direct access. So a patient can literally walk into our door. I don't know if you guys have that in right. Texas. Yep. Um, you know, the old thought would be, you know, I got to go to the doctor. I got to get a script. I got to go into therapy and it varies on insurance. You know, there are yeah. certain, you know, rules and regulations around it, but for the most part, like a patient can walk right in our door and say, Hey, I've been having foot pain. Can I set up for a screen and we can treat you yeah. right. We still, you know, and if we think you need to get to the doctor, like we have those contacts, we can get you into the doctor, right. You know, in my running population, like there's a handful of doctors in our area that I would send to because they're runners themselves. Like they know right. the verbiage, they know the, the world of running and they're going to happily treat the runner. And, yeah. um, and I think, you know, so to have that kind of PT first mindset doesn't mean it may not even mean three times a week, but like you said, a couple weeks of, of, you know, focusing on the, looking at the body globally, right. Focusing on the weak areas and we know your runner. So we know the loads and demands that go with running and yeah. we look at your body and find where the strengths and imbalances are and 
kind of, like I said, like educate you, right? Here's the right. tools. Here's the things you need to do. Um, and I'm a resource, right? Use me as a resource. And I'm here to walk you through this journey. It may take two weeks. It may take four weeks. Like, but right. the sooner you can kind of grab on to that mon- mindset, it may not lead to three times a week for eight weeks right. in a therapy clinic, right? Those right. are that that's hopefully not the journey you're on. If you can get yeah. in early, you know, first line of defense PT, get in. And, and if we need to get to a doc, we get to a doc. And if we don't, right. you know, we're happy to treat you and, and good luck running. Keep me right. in, keep me in the loop, you know? Right. So awesome. Well, um, you know, I want to thank you for your time because we've, oh. we've, we've taken up a whole hour and it's been great. And I think oh, we yeah. could talk thank for you, a, for a much longer time, but I want to be yes. respectful of your time. Um, so how can people learn more about, you know, uh, what y'all are doing at ATI, um, connect with y'all is, are y'all, are y'all like prominent on social media or anything like that where they can follow along? Yeah, almost all social media platforms. So ATI, we're in 25, 26 states, something like that. I, I feel like I hear various numbers, but, um, we're in a lot. We also do virtual health. So technically we're in all 50. Cool. Um, my name is Brandon. I'm, I'm a running specialist, endurance specialist. I love treating the runner. That is my niche. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have a lot of contacts of therapists throughout the company, um, across the company that are running specialists as well. So right. we would, uh, we love treating this population. Many of us are runners or triathletes ourselves, and we specialize in this. So if you are a runner out there and you're hearing this and you have an ache or pain, um, please think of me or I can, and Jerry, you know, can certainly put you in touch with me, but I'd love to help you or get you connected to a local therapist or local right. ATI that can. Um, but awesome. there's a lot of resources out there. Um, and yeah. just know your community, know your body and, and, um, surround yourself with people that can help you along this running journey. Cause it's a fun journey to be on. And yep. we want to make sure that you can do it efficiently and as pain-free as possible. Yep. That's true. And it, it, it doesn't have to be painful all the time. Correct. Right? The aches and pains are going to happen, but like the the continual pain, it that's not what running has to be. No, no, no. it doesn't. And yeah, we know aches and pains are going to come with running, yeah. but I think just looking for those signs early on, thinking preventative, thinking PT first when at when it's needed, and right. um, yeah, and and it makes running enjoyable. And then you become that runner that just wants to do more of it. Right. So. Awesome. Well, awesome. thank you again. Thank you, Jerry. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for checking out the Confidence Through Health podcast. Please subscribe, post a review, share this episode with those you love who need a little extra help with their health journey. Visit allinhealthandwellness.com to learn more about the coaching programs that I provide. All episodes are produced by the Social Media Cowboys, your source for all online marketing needs. Go to socialmediacowboys.com for more information.